two days ago, I wrote a poem. And I wrote it when I was in a dark place. But I am proud of the poem because it came directly from my heart. So, I'm just going to turn the camera down a little bit. There we go. But it came directly from my heart. Um, and I am okay. Not all of this poem is about me at all. Um, I just thought I'd, just, I'd kind of write about depression, anxiety, PTSD, um, generically. So, um, if you are triggered by any talk of uh, self-harm, um, just mental illness, um, substance abuse, anything like that, um, then I'd say this video maybe isn't for you. Um, so I'll give you a chance to click off now. But for those of you that have decided to stay, then um, you've been warned. And I'm not doing this for sympathy. Please don't, you know, say, oh, I'm so sorry for you or anything like that because I'm writing about it generically. I'm writing about mental illness generically. It's not necessarily all aimed at myself. Um, I just wanted to write about it because I was a bit sad. You understand that I'm depressed. But you do not understand depression. You understand that I self-harm. But you do not see that it's not merely something somebody chooses to do. You understand that I have anxiety. But you can't see the thoughts racing in my head at 1000 miles per hour. Everyone is living, breathing, winning. But I'm being smothered. Barely swimming. Everybody oblivious. But for me it's multivious. Multivious means many ways or roads, and in this case it never ends, it never goes. You can't control the thoughts, the thoughts control you, and they have an effect on everything that you do. I wish people could see that, but when you try to tell them that, they clap right back. Depression is a thief, the happiness you've lost that you're trying to regain. Some people spend their whole lives trying to find it again. And then one day it hits you, and you realise that what you've lost isn't just happiness. You've lost yourself. You're a shell saying farewell to yourself because you fell. You fell into your unconsciousness, feeling that there's no way to come back from this, in the pain, despair and restlessness. People say, don't give up, you must keep trying. But inside I've already been dying. I've been crying for so long. Your heart aches 24-7. Your eyes are puffy and red and your soul is weeping, but you've run out of tears, meaning your mind must find other ways to interfere. Paranoia and fear. And good old anxiety comes in to say hi. Part of you thinks, do your worst, you can try. But the thing is, anxiety always wins, doesn't it? The panic attacks, the clammy back, the tap tap tap, the continual snack, feeling like you can't come back, it's all one big throwback. And you get dizzy and you can't hear and you can't see. They're all busy, you're frozen in fear, stuck in a standstill. And you can't breathe, and you can't breathe, and you can't breathe. And it's all gone black. All there is is fuzz. Some people come rushing up and they say, it's going to be okay, come with us. I'm suffocating and drowning in that moment. And people are saying, just breathe. If only it were that simple. Anxiety is a prison cell without the key. It's an endless tunnel the end can't be seen. It's the nervousness and the OCD. It's the blaming yourself and the PTSD. It's the never-ending ocean and the waves of the sea. It's the walls closing and the roof caving in. Imagine a life where that is your every waking moment every atom in your body before you go to sleep. Now imagine this, and I mean really imagine. Imagine a life without emotions except for sadness. But even worse, 
nothing at all. Now imagine it's a loved one's birthday. Whoever it is closest in your heart, dead or alive, imagine them. They're all singing happy birthday. They're singing, they're laughing. And you're just stood there. And you can see your body, but you can't control it. You're merely looking down on it. Like a bird's eye view. And you may be singing along, but the emotion isn't there. You're merely stuttering meaningless words in tune. People are talking to you. Listen to them. Do you understand what they're saying? No. Of course you don't, it's gone straight through. It's been absorbed like a sponge, but the sponge is full, and it starts to leak its contents onto the floor. Imagine trying to find something that will make you laugh, but it doesn't work, and because you know it's funny, but you're not laughing, you freak out and let out a fake cackle, a nervous cackle, that the type that comes out during an uncomfortable social interaction, like a job meeting on the graveyard shift. Now imagine that you're so numb, you can't feel your limbs. You know you're breathing and your heart is beating, but you don't feel it. A state where I'm tired no longer means I'm feeling sleepy. It's a way of life where you are drained and getting up in the morning seems impossible. Some people wish they could never wake up. I am one of those people. It's a respite, because sleep is no longer just a rejuvenating, refreshing experience. It's an escape. It's the one moment where you can temporarily shut off. Regarding you don't have the night terrors that you do most nights. Imagine a world where you're shunned upon for feeling happiness, if at all capable. Because all people with depression have their ups and their downs, but what goes up must come down, and when it does, you will have been on cloud nine, and with a snap of the fingers, you've hit rock bottom. You feel guilty for feeling happiness, so even when you're happy, you're not. And everybody has their ideologies as to how they could fix it. My room is a mess. No motivation to change it. Would like to meet some nice friends, but you have no way to obtain it. Making promises to people with the instant fear that you might break it. Or it could be an addiction that needs to be fed, with no way to feed it. Because there is no energy, there is no motivation. You hit a low, can't always find the causation. And this thing causing the anxiety becomes a fixation. You've lost all sensation and then, all of a sudden, the temptation kicks in. And deep down you just want to feel anything. The razor across your arm makes your skin burn and it stings. Some people turn to drugs or drink, among other things. And after the task you turn to is complete, you start to feel better. There is relief. But then it starts to wear off and once again your mood depletes. And it becomes an endless cycle. Those habits repeat. And if by some miracle you escape from its clutch, recovery is never permanent and if it becomes too much, there is a potential for a relapse. You crack under pressure, trying to stitch up the gaps. And when life takes a crap on you, slap it right back. Because perhaps your relapse, your collapse, was designed to make you stronger. Count the days that you're sober. Count each day that there are no new scars. And you will see in time you are so, so strong. You are beautiful. You are more clever and capable than you ever thought that you could be. And once you find that in yourself, you will see that although everything isn't the way you planned it to be, doesn't mean there's no reason to be happy. Find a positive to every negative. Find a reason or a goal to live up to each day. Surround yourself with the people that care about you. Talk to a doctor or a specialist. And although there is no cure for depression, there is management. And it does get better.